we are in the process of um, learning when, when, how to measure area. One of the most important concepts in all of math. Um, and it's a mouthful, as you can tell by the fact that I've been talking for one hour and I'm not done. So it doesn't matter because we're unbreakable. I'm just going to power through it. And it's going to be worth it in the end because of the friends we made along the way. Okay. Um, so we were. Um, we were trying to compute the area under the parabola. So we were trying to uh, take this parabola. And we were doing it by putting some rectangles. Well, this is the so this is the area I'm trying to compute. And what I did yesterday was really hinting at, at it being one third. Um, and we were doing this by splitting the this interval zero one into uh segments into n many segments and then splitting this region into rectangles and finding the total area of those rectangles so the we're making these divisions here and these points um These points were one, two, three divided by n because there were well, n plus one points in there. Um, and they were all equally spaced um, and the equal distance. I mean, the length of one divided the n times gets me one over n. And the uh, the height of the point, the height of the graph above the point i over n is the function applied to i over n. So this was um, um, this this was the, the height i squared over n squared. So we have the, the base of the rectangles and we then we have the height of the rectangles. I'm going kind of fast through this because I'm just rem reminding you what we did yesterday and then so the i rectangle it looks like this um it starts at the point i minus one divided by n the right end point is i divided by n and the this point is on the graph this point is i minus one divided by n, i minus one squared divided by n squared. So its area is one over n times i minus one squared divided by n squared. Uh, this is the, this is the base. This is the height, uh, and the area of the rectangle is the base times the height. So um, the area of all the rectangles, so the total, the sum, is, well, do this for i equals 1, then i equals 2, then i equals 3, i equals 4. And then keep going until you until you're done. So um, make i equals one. You get 
zero squared divided by n cubed. And then you make i equals uh, two. You get one squared divided by n cubed. Make i equals three. And so you make i equals n. So if you make i equals three in this formula, you get two squared divided by n cubed. Um, then you will get three squared divided by n cubed. At some point here, at point i, you get i minus one squared divided by n cubed. And um, in the end, we end with n minus one squared divided by n cubed. Woo. Um, and since writing sums like this is kind of gets very annoying very fast, we have a way of writing sums. Uh, just give you the formula for what we're summing, which is here's the formula. So the, there's a there's a way to tell you sum up this formula, uh, which is to say uh, write sigma sigma for sum, and then write the formula. And then I tell you what you need to plug in for i. Uh, I, you plug in one, and then you keep going until you reach n. So the thing you write in the bottom is where you start. The thing you write in the top is where you end. And, and you plug in the value, the corresponding value of i in the formula. So. This is the area of the rectangle. Um, and the last, last thing I did was just write this into the calculator because it turns out that a lot of calculators understand sigma notation. Because that's supposed to be n cubed or n squared. So um, it's supposed to be n cubed. Uh, thanks for the question, Sydney. So um, the base uh, was one over n, and the height had an n squared there. So if I combine them together, uh, this becomes an n cubed. So I'm just going to go um, write down n cubed. Yesterday, I was writing n times n squared, but today, I've gotten tired of not simplifying that. But I get where the question is coming from because I do copy things wrong all the time. So <clears throat> any other questions? Okay, so uh, let me just copy this formula. Will it, will it understand that I wanna? Oh yeah. So I can even make n a variable and then decide later what I want it to be. So like I said, when I make n equals four, this is the, the one we did by hand yesterday. Uh, but now, since I have a computer, I can make it pretty large. Um, and see, if you look at this, um, these numbers, I think they seem to be approaching a limit. Um, at some point, I think at some point it's just not, maybe, maybe, I don't know if he's just refusing to do it or just thinking for a long time. No, I think I froze it. Uh, oops. Let's just reload that page. But it really seems like it's approaching um, point three 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 three. The
the calculator suggests that this um, this sum I was just writing is approaching. So um, I can I can sort of prove it for you that, that this works. Um, so here's how um, we can sort of prove it. Um, if you so one thing. The first thing that we notice about this sum is that it has an n cube dividing everywhere. Uh, so I can take I can take that as a common factor um, because this is zero squared divided by n cubed plus one squared divided by n cubed. There's n n cubed anywhere. I don't know how many things there are. How many terms there are, but um, they all have. What I know is that they all have n cubes. Um, maybe better way to write it is as a multiplication by one over n cubes. So we can take that as a common factor. And then I'm left with the sums of the squares of the numbers from, uh, from 0 to n minus 1. And now, well, um, also, I could just write, it, write this back in sigma notation. Where you can see, all I did was pull out a uh, a factor uh, from the sum. You don't need to you don't need to write this down to decide that you can take out a constant out of a sum. So um, now, um, what to do? So. So what to do with the sum of the squares of the natural numbers? Um, so what what you do is you maybe you Google <laughs> sum of squares of the natural numbers. Um, there's a there's a, just a formula I can use, um, which is kind of lucky, which is not a very important formula in life. Like some formulas, like the chain rule is a very important formula in life. This is not. This is important if you happen to be computing the area under a parabola. Um, but I can tell you what it is, and I could prove it if I had the time, but I kind of don't. Uh, if you want to add the, all the squares of the natural numbers up to n, the answer that you get is n times n plus one times two n plus one divided by six. I think I got that right. Did I get it right? Do you believe that I would get that right? Yeah, I know this formula. So um, let's just take take this on faith. We could, you could you know see that when you make, for example, n equals one, you do get one. You make n equals two, you get two times three, which is six. Uh, you get five, uh, which is one squared plus two squared. <clears throat> this is not that hard to prove, honestly. But I, 
kind of off topic. So if we if we use this formula, then th this will tell us that if I go to lowercase m minus one, like I'm going here. This will be will replace capital N by lowercase m minus one. This will be m minus one times n times two m minus one plus one divided by six. <clears throat> so that's that's a, with some formula. Um, y six. I don't y two m plus one. It just works. I I don't know. I I, I don't have a good reason for y six. <clears throat> I can tell you in office hours why this works. Okay. Um, so if I use, if I take this formula now, so I said that the sum of the squares of 2n minus 1 is um, m minus one times n times two m minus one plus one divided by six. So this means that the, the total area of the rectangles, it is, um, it was one over n cubed times this sum. So one over n cubed, so let's simplify, let's simplify what we got before though. Uh, n minus one times n, and this is two n minus two plus one. And this is n minus one times n times to a minus one. <laughs> so um, this is going to be, I'm going to plug that in there. And this is now, I mean, this is now just some function of n. You could call it, you replace n by x if you're happier. But this is a limit you know perfectly well how to do. You know how to do it more than one way, even. Um, so I have a I have a very manageable formula. Oh, it even it even simplifies because there's an n in the top and the bottom. So that's the, I mean that's six. I'm not. I'm. I don't. I'm not sure why it's there, except that the formula works. Um, but maybe, maybe the reason that it works is that this is gonna give us a one third as a limit. So um, now I gotta take this limit of m minus one times two and minus one divided by six n squared. So how do you take this limit? How should I take this limit? Because there's more than one way to do it. So both the top and the bottom approach infinity.
We know so some need to ask a question. Well, Vital, thank you, Cindy. Um, sure, why not? Uh, so this is infinity divided by infinity, so I can use Lopital. I have I have very strong suspicions that it's just Sydney and me today. Uh, So if I'm gonna use Lopital, um, do I feel like using the product rule or do I feel like multiplying it out? Probably feel like multiplying it out seems easier. So this is um, x minus one, two x minus one, this is gonna be two x squared minus two x minus x plus one. So two x squared plus Three x uh, plus one, and now we can take the derivative and the top on the bottom. And we'll get four x plus three divided by twelve x, and now what is this? Well, this is infinity divided by infinity. So let's use L'Hopital again. Uh, this is four divided by 12. Uh, so no longer infinity divided by infinity, this is one third. <clears throat> so I'm pretty sure that the area under the parabola is one third. Um, and actually what we do in practice is we take this limit as a definition because I, I have no other way. I mean, unless I'm talking about amounts of paint, uh, of paint I need to use to paint that region, I have no other better definition of area than just stuff rectangles in there and see what you can, see what you can fit. So, um, well, Theory under the parabola is one third. Does it look like one third? Does this look like it's a third of the square? I guess it is. I don't know, not that good. Or... I guess in that. <clears throat> I guess it could. Seems so. All right. Good morning, Pascal. Now there's three of us. Uh, next page. Okay. So I did an example of an area. So now I'm gonna, what we're, what we're trying to do now is to figure out what we would do. I mean, clearly the computation is a nightmare. Um, luckily, we're, we're gonna learn a shortcut to do this so fast. Um, in, in a week, uh, this whole thing that took me an hour and a half is gonna take you three seconds, um, which is amazing, but uh, we're not there yet. We're trying to understand what we're even doing. 
so um so how to compute the area under the graph of a function f And there's going to be probably there's got um, x has to be bounded between. We're going to measure it under a closed interval. Um, so what we have is a positive function, and then two endpoints here, a and b. So what I'm supposed to do is approximate it. I'm, I'm now what I'm going to do. Is, is just try to reproduce what we did with the parabola, try to get a formula for the area, which is going to be uh, some areas of rectangles. Um, so um, what we did before, was split this into a bunch of pieces and then take some rectangles. I guess what I did was look at the left hand point. Um, and then, uh, well, find the area of the rectangles. So I'm going to need to know the basis of all of them and the height. So, um, well, the first thing we do is split the interval AB into N equal parts. So um, how long is the interval AB? B. So if the interval from one to three has length three, I don't think so. B minus A, there you go. Thank you, Pascal. Oops, lol. Uh, so the the length of the the distance you have to travel from A to B is the difference. So um, if we divide it into n parts, we're going to have to well divide it. That's why we call it division. <clears throat> Okay, so the base of each um, oh, that's learning for you. The length of each uh, the base of each rectangle is b minus a divided by n. Um, oof, lots of letters here. Okay, so um, we have our interval a b, and what we're doing is putting a bunch of intermediate points here, putting a minus one of them. So let's just call them x0, x1, x2, x and minus one, x n. <clears throat> um, which I could give formulas for those, but so well x0 x0 is a x1 is just an b minus a 
divided by n units to the right of x zero. So it's x zero plus b minus a divided by n. X two is b minus one divided by n units to the right of x one. So that makes it um, two whole lengths to the right of, of, of x zero. What am I doing? I'm saying a thing and writing another. X i is going to be i times this length to the right of x zero. But I'm just going to keep writing, right, calling them x uh, x one, x two, x three. Okay, so that's the base of the rectangles. So what about the heights? So I have my rectangle here. between uh, two points. <clears throat> and what I'm doing um, is saying, this point, the left point is on the graph. Why the upper left corner? Um, no reason. Um, the, the thing is, before for the parabola, I used the upper left corner because I wanted the rectangle to be underneath, but if I had use the other corner and I had had the rectangle be on top of the parabola, it shouldn't, I should have gotten the same answer, hopefully. Well, there goes my phone dying. Um, it shouldn't, I should get the same answer, whatever I choose. Um, otherwise, um, I'm in trouble. But either way, um, if it's a point on the graph and it has x coordinate equal to xi, so some number, whatever that is, then um, I know it's y coordinate. Um, It's, it's a function evaluated at the x-coordinate because it's on the graph. So this point here, this is the point xi, f of xi, and the graph is doing something down there. Okay. Uh, so that tells me that tells me the height of the of the rectangle. Um, the height of the rectangle is is the y coordinate. So um, I now know the base. It's b minus a divided by n. From the previous slide, I know the height. Uh, it's the function evaluated at that point. And with those two together, um, I know the area. Just multiply them. It's the base times the height. So the base is b minus a divided by n, and the height is f of x i. Right. 
or maybe um, I should call this since this is the difference, um, the length of this interval, the difference in the x size. Maybe I'm going to call this uh, delta x. This is a increment in x between um, xi and xi plus 1, which I guess it's always the same uh, for all the rectangles, but maybe I wasn't, maybe I don't have to make them the same. Okay, so so that's here are the rectangles. Um, so the area, the area of all the rectangles together is the sum. So um, it's the area of the first rectangle, uh, which is going to have, I guess, i equals 0. Um, the area of the second rectangle, and so on. So, so this is the sum. This is the sum we were doing before for the parabola. This is um, this is what we got here. Except now, the function, well, uh, zero and one are a and b, and the function is not necessarily x squared. But this is how you're supposed to compute the area under any any function. And maybe I can write this as um, more uh, compactly this in sigma notation. And that's, uh, that's what area is. Um, so, well, that's what the area under the rectangles is. So now, well, now, are there any questions? Oh, Shelby. Shelby, you're awake too. I didn't know this. Good morning, Shelby. Good morning. Right. Um, so, <clears throat> wait. What did you write at the bottom of the sigma? At the bottom of the sigma, I wrote um, i equals one. Oof. What did I write? Wait. So, like, why is it uh, f of like x of i minus one again? Um, well, kind of, this is not the only way I could write this. Um, if, if I start with i equals one, like I said here, I start with making this x zero, which matches what I have here. And then I go all the way to n and I end with n minus one, but I could get the same, ah, what a room. Let me just write it again. So what I just wrote was start at one and uh, finish at n. And plug in here 
x i minus one. But this is the exact same thing at, as starting at zero and ending at n minus one and plugging in x i. Um, I was just trying to match closer what we wrote for the parabola. So if you look at this one, when you plug in x equal y equals zero, uh, i equals zero, sorry. Plug in i equals zero, you get f of x zero plus x one. And when you do this other one, you start plugging in zero, but now it's a different formula. So you get the exact same thing. So these two, they mean exactly the same thing. Um, Well, these three, I guess. Um, there's just more than one way to write this. Okay. So this is the area of stopping a bunch of rectangles under the graph. So the area under y equals f of x. Um, between x equals a and x equals b is supposed to be the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum of, say from i equals one to n, Uh, well, this is supposed to be the area. <clears throat> so, um, where, so, where x0, x1, um, The, the the x's are numbers between a and b, um, which um, split the interval into equal pieces. Um, delta x is x i minus x i minus one. So x i uh, delta x is the space. I never seen two easy looking derivatives. Always one of them got to be complicated. I'm confused, Dustin. Um, there's no derivatives here. It, it's it's just it's a joke. Uh, is it a reference to something I'm not getting? So um, I'm perfectly aware that, um, that this is very complicated. <clears throat> but um, the idea is really that we're taking the areas of rectangles and adding them together. The problem is that there's a lot of rectangles and we're trying to put as many as we can. We're trying to make the number of rectangles approach infinity. Each rectangle has its own base and height. So that's just a whole bunch of letters you throw in there. But really, all that's happening is that we're taking the base and heights of rectangles and adding them together, um, which makes it makes it into a very hard limit to compute. But the thing is, very soon we're going to learn to do this. We're gonna we're gonna get really good at doing this. <clears throat> Uh, and there's going to be there's going to be no sums involved, so it's going to be great. <clears throat> okay, uh, so um, this is so this is the integral. Um,
is the integral of f from a to b um and we we write it with this symbol which is an, which is a very long s and we write the the interval at the bottom at the top of the s and here we write uh, the function and we write the x to indicate the variable and when we write this we mean uh, this limit So now you know what an integral is. So sometimes you gotta learn what a thing is before you learn how to compute it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, oof. You didn't sign up for this class to have an easy time. Okay, so um, this is the area. The area is the limit of all these sums. Um, So like I was saying before, um, xi, so xi minus one, what did I write before? xi minus one. Um, I, I got xi minus one because, um, I was I was making uh, the upper left corner of the rectangle. I was making it be on the graph oh, corner of the corner. So if this is my function. I was choosing rectangles like this, where they meet the graph in the upper left corner. But it shouldn't matter. Um, I should get the same limit. Um, Using the right corner. So if I make my rectangles, if I make the rectangles be like this, be the yellow ones, in the limit, it shouldn't matter. Or even, or even any point in between. So, for example, choose the highest or the lowest or anything, the midpoints. Um, they should all give me the same number, and if they do, I will say, I will say that this area exists honestly. And if they don't, I will say it doesn't. All right. Woo. Um that's it for today. Tomorrow um we will learn more about intervals, as you might expect. <laughs>